Hello there, and welcome back to this damn full idealistic crusade. This video will be going over my latest pickups uh, for my record collection, in addition to the LPs I picked up at our last local record convention, which is the first that's really happened since uh, the COVID shutdown. So it was a cool thing to be able to go and do, and uh, they had it outdoors at a flea market, so that way everybody could wear masks and you know do some crate digging in relative safety. And you know it was it was a nice thing to go to one weekend and. Uh, been meaning to put this video out for a while, so I just decided to add in the few new records and things. So we're going to start with the choice piece of this, which is this uh, eBay find, which I was stunned to get another for my uh, British UK original pressings uh, for Bowie. So this is, of course, the original uh, British pressing of the classic Lodger, which is the third and final of the Berlin Trilogy. Yeah, because this was mastered by Greg Calvi at Sterling in New York. It's one of the Bowie albums that it's debated if you really need to get a British pressing or if the U.S. one will do you just as good. Um, this one, though, I think because the British vinyl, the formulation is so much superior and uh, it's a beautiful release, I think probably the British one edges out. Um, but starting with the next record on Scary Monsters, that's... Scary Monsters is pretty much where the U.S. pressings take over because I've read a lot of reports saying that Scary Monsters on the U.S. pressing is a lot better than the U.K. one, and they're actually different masterings, so um, that's something to take into account. I don't have either one yet, so I'm definitely going to compare when I can, but that's that's where I know for a fact like everybody starts to shift over and say uh, that the U.S. pressings are the ones to go for. And then by the time you get to Let's Dance, uh, which was on EMI, I mean, that's... That's a must-own pressing, and you need the U.S. for the RL cut. So anyway, this is the original pressing of Lodger, of course, with the sideways cover. So it opens like this, but of course, if you want to view the postcard section, you need to turn it sideways. And of course, it's the beautiful gatefold, which I'll show you this way. And until you get this in your hands, this jacket is printed on such a beautiful glossy photo card style. I mean, this this literally is as glossy as, as a photograph you would have gotten developed. I mean, it is ultra smooth. So uh, I never have I seen a jacket have this level of glossiness on anything vintage. It's usually, you know, hyper modern stuff where they wanted a really fancy jacket. But I mean, this thing is just beautiful. Uh, of course, the actual card stock is quite thin. So it's a little floppy because it is a British pressing, which is, you know, pretty much how almost all British pressings were. I have seen American pressings of this, and it was just a standard jacket. It was still the gatefold, but it was not like this. So again, you want to go for the British pressing on this. Um, the, the jacket is gorgeous, uh, iconic, and of course has the original gatefold. Then you have the original insert, which is actually just a small sleeve, uh, well, I should say small paper insert, uh, nicely cut down so it doesn't get stuck in and out of the jacket. Another shot of DB there. And then on the back, you have your lyric sheet. And very nicely, you have all of the production credits, uh, again, recorded in Switzerland, uh, mastered by Greg Calvi at Sterling Sound, who did most of the boy albums of this era, but again... I think just because the UK vinyl formulation is better and cleaner and quieter, most importantly, and the jacket is so freaking gorgeous, you should definitely go for the original British pressing on Lodger. And of course, here you have the original orange British RCA label, which all of your original Bowie pressings up until this point will be on. Uh, later reissues will use black, green, or other RCA labels. Um, it's not Dynaflex. It is, you know, it's it seems like a standard weight piece of wax, um, but uh, it, it's uh, thankfully not. Dyn Most pretty much all the UK Bowies didn't need to go to Dynaflex. That was just uh, primarily a US thing. Um, what's also cool about this, you have the Sterling Stampers, and it's actually initialed and signed by Greg Calvi. He didn't always sign stuff. It usually just had the Sterling Stampers. So it's got his initials on both sides. It is an A1, B1 matrix pressing for uh, matrix nerds out there, which usually can be very important with Bowie pressings, particularly the original British ones like this. And it does have a custom runout, which is pretty cool. So uh, side one is no sense is better, dot, dot, dot. And side two is... Than none at all, dot, dot, dot. And then also, 
because it's Bowie and he was, of course, you know, a legend already in his time by this point. The actual catalog of the label is literally uh, B-O-W-L-P. So it literally has, you know, short for Bowie LP in the catalog um, matrix runout info. So this was just a surprise eBay find, uh, like the copy of Young Americans I got into not too long ago, just popped up and, uh, you know, I waited till the last minute, there weren't any bidders, so I just went for it and uh, got it at a really fashionable price, uh, you know, just... Uh, Getting these for 20 bucks and under, I mean, it's amazing that they pop up. Uh, it seemed especially after after when Bowie passed a number of years ago that, uh, you know, original pressings were never going to come back down. But I think the reissue campaign and with them being very easily available, it's made the uh, values kind of come down a bit because people think, oh, I can just get the reissue when... I mean, those are pretty much just remixes anyway, and I have, I have no need for them. I'm glad they exist. I'm glad there's something in print, but uh, nothing compares to these original pressings um, outside of, I know some people prefer certain original CDs, but uh, from my experience, uh, the best original vinyl pressing for Bowie albums is really the way to go. And I think pretty much through Lodger, you're best off getting uh, original UK copies. So this was a stunning surprise, and this thing is... Very good plus plus. It plays like a mint record. It is absolutely sublime. I've never heard this album sound as good. Um, so this this is definitely a uh, another grail title for me. Then moving on to the two new records that I picked up. Both of these are uh, projects or side projects or, uh, yep, yeah, side projects of uh, Peter Buck, which he's done uh, so much stuff uh, post REM disbanding in 2011. And because I'm such an REM lifelong fanatic there's literally nothing that any of the guys do that i don't have to go and seek out so uh, i've been meaning to chip away at a few more of these uh he's done three solo records which are a hell of a lot of fun they're vinyl exclusives and you can still get them pretty cheap though uh because they're vinyl exclusive they're starting to dry up so if you want them go get them before they're gone uh, he also did and he even did an ep because he just he can't stop doing stuff and uh i'm sure corona has been driving him crazy because <laughs> he seems to just have to play and record consistently. Um, so anyway, this is a, uh, uh, a project he did with Luke Haynes with the beautiful title of Beat Poetry for Survivalists. Uh, love the title, love the cover. Um, this is a pretty great, solid record. Uh, kind of flies under the radar like most of the stuff he does. Uh, it's on a smaller label that I wasn't familiar with before called Cherry Red Records. Uh, the pressing's quite good. Uh, just simple, straightforward, but uh, yeah, you can get this dirt cheap now. Uh, like I've seen it drop below ten dollars. Um, so when it did that online, I was just like, you know what, I need this. So I just, I just went ahead and got it, and uh, very glad I did. Like most modern recordings, I'm sure it was recorded digital, and then uh, there's a CD version as well, and you know you can get a digital download, but uh, the vinyl is a bit more relaxed and dynamic range, so you do get a bit of dynamic range back as opposed to the um, the digital version. Uh, with his solo records, those were all recorded analog, so that's a that's another reason why those are really cool to have. Uh, and he was just like, I just want to release them on this tiny label that's next door to my house <laughs> in, in Seattle. And uh, yeah, so um, those are really cool. Again, I'm not sure if this, I'm thinking this is probably a digital recording. I don't think it's all analog, but you know, it could be, I, I'm not for certain. Um, but anyway, as the title, as the titles of the songs indicate, this is a pretty fun record and anything he does, I've, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to seek out and find, I still need to get a lot of the other stuff he's done in the past, like all of the minus five records. Uh, he's done so much stuff and it's just like you, you blink and he's got another, you know, uh, 50 things cooking in the kitchen, get a pretty nice custom inner. Uh, it's a relatively thicker card stock. So it's not paper, which is cool. I'm not sure where this was pressed. I don't think it indicates on here. Um, yeah, let me see. I don't think it's got it in the dead wax. Let me double check. No, there's no indication in the dead wax, but it's some pretty cool custom labels. Fun and colorful. Turn this around so you can see it straight up. Replication of what's on the uh, cover. So yeah, um, just a super fun record. Uh, you know, very much 
indie and an indie, an indie release you know for lack of a better term and uh again anything he does is is worth your time and uh again it's like he's just so ridiculously prolific now that his main job is no longer a thing um but anyway so yeah just been meaning to pick this up it just came out this year and again you can get it on when it goes on sale or gets marked down on amazon sometimes for like under 10 bucks plus it includes an mp3 download so uh totally worth your time next up is the other peter buck related record this is the uh, second record from the Filthy Friends supergroup of sorts, uh, entitled Emerald Valley. Uh, the first one I have on, on Wax as well, which was also a pretty good record. If I remember correctly, that one was called Invitation. Um, but anyway, been meaning to pick this up, just never got around to it. Um, I heard I heard it digitally when it came out, and there's some music videos and things. Uh, but I really wanted to get the vinyl version because, again... You get a little bit of dynamic range back, and it just sounds a little bit better. It's a little flatter, uh, but that's you know pretty much what most modern indie label recordings are like. You know, it's usually digital, and uh, because there is some you know dynamic range compression, you have to pick and choose between oh, do I want a perfect digital copy on CD for like fifteen bucks that's you know got jacked up loudness, or do I want to take the risk of paying like you know usually practically double the amount to get the vinyl version hopefully it's a little bit you know more relaxed and i get some more dynamics but i run the risk of getting a crappy pressing so usually i wait i try to wait till things go on sale or until i catch something when it's at a good price so finally get a copy of this and what made it harder is uh the uh they made a special version for indie stores which this is one of those which has the little sticker here I saved. Uh, this is actually a colored wax pressing that's uh, the only sold at uh, indie stores. It's um, this particular one's on the Kill Rock Stars label. So if you want to get this, uh, standard black vinyl everywhere. But if you want the exclusive colored version, you have to get it at an indie store. And you know, I'm sure they didn't make a whole ton of these, so I'm sure eventually it'll become the more uh, preferable and harder to find rarer version. Here's the rear. And it's actually got a gatefold, which is pretty cool. So pretty nice gatefold, and you get your lyrics printed in here, and more shots of the band, and your credits on the bottom. Again, not sure where this is pressed because, uh, unfortunately, most modern vinyl pressings, particularly these indie releases, uh, typically don't indicate where they get pressed. So you have to guess, and you know, um, you know, wonder if it's like United or somewhere else in the states. So because, of course, the record is called Emerald Valley, the color pressing is, of course, this nice emerald shade of green. Um, I didn't know what to expect getting this, and uh, you know, I cracked it open, and I'm like, yeah, this it does look quite nice. And uh, it's not translucent, it's just, you know, solid emerald color, but... I'm not really big on colored vinyl because I know, you know, some people say it can, you know, they swear up and down it causes problems and it can cause more noise and things. But, you know, on something like this, when I have the opportunity to get the colored version, I try to just go ahead because I know eventually it's going to be the rarer version or it's like a limited exclusive version. And, uh, you know, usually on ones like this, it's the same as the standard black version. Um, just, you know, sometimes you can get bad runs of colored vinyl, but it's not something I go out of my way for but you know when it's something I want to pick up and I know there's a colored version I'm like well let me see if I can find a, a ver uh, version of the colored pressing I'll also go ahead and say I haven't had the time to spin through this entirely but I did check out some tracks and uh, it does come with a download code which I redeemed and uh, this like their first album uh, this is significantly less loud than the uh, mp3 download version <laughs> um so yeah, the first album had the digital version is really loud. This one it's it's also pretty loud. So if you are interested in picking up their records, just go ahead and get the vinyl version because they come with download codes. So you know if you want it digital, then you know you can have that as well, or you can uh, just do a, a vinyl transfer if you really want to do it that way. But uh, since it's basically the same price as the CD, you might as well just get it on wax. All right, so moving on to things I picked up from the record show a couple weeks back. Uh, these are from a stack of 45s I got at one table uh, where they had uh, a, a lot of really great condition 45s. Then they had a little side box, and I see the little red clearance tag, and I'm like, uh-oh. So <laughs> normally I don't really go for 45s because there's a lot of hassle in trying to find clean ones, and then storing them you have to get a special box and you know it, there's there's a lot of hassles that come with it i do like the benefit of having you know the the better fidelity in a 45s rpm version um 
but you also have to make sure, okay, is it the same mastering as the album? A lot of times it's different, uh, you know, and then a lot of times you have to deal with single edits and things like that. So typically, unless it's something like this where it's really great deals and, you know, they have their sleeves and, you know, they're already, you know, super nice uh, for dirt cheap, uh, I usually just kind of don't bother because you usually get to dig through boxes and boxes and boxes. Um and then you buy what you think is a great one. Then you get home and it's destroyed with grooveware and you've been burned yet again. And it's like, no. So anyway, uh, these are the first six of a nice little stack I got. Most of these were a dollar or less. So they were super marked down. Uh, all are in excellent condition. They're already sleeved and everything. So I was just like, okay, I'm just, just here's, I handed them to the guy. I'm like, okay, just don't, just, just tell me, just tell me the price. <laughs> just give me my total. Um, so anyway, picked up uh, 45s of uh, Shadows of the Night, uh, this really cool uh, Bowie single of Heroes with B2 Schneider. This is actually part of a early 80s Bowie single reissue series from the UK. Um, so they all have this similar uh, cover design. I'd heard of these before, but never thought I'd stumble across one. The sleeve is a bit messed up, but the actual 45 is perfect, and it's still got the punch out intact. So it's got the old school UK. Um, let me go ahead and show you. Again, the, the label and the cover isn't in perfect shape, but you can see the punch out is still there and the vinyl itself is super minty, for, especially for a 45. Um, so these are apparently a really cool way of getting the classic Bowie singles if you want them in uh, you know vintage seven inch form, but they are getting harder and harder to come by and they do usually cost a little bit. So uh, normally this single will go for like, you know, 10 bucks or more on Discog. So uh, I figured, you know, I'd try it for, buy. <laughs> I'd really try it for a dollar. So um, yeah, just super cool and stunning to find it in there. Next is the uh, NXS and Jimmy Barnes uh, Good Times from the Lost Boys soundtrack. Then the classic Shebop. And uh, I grabbed the one of Pink Houses because it's one of the Mellencamp singles that actually has the album uh, Bob Ludwig mastering. And the RL master of the Aha uh -huh album is one of my like sonic grails uh he cut uh aha uh -huh, and uh also he cut the first versions of scarecrow so those two are those uh fantastic sounding mellencamp pressings that i recommend to everybody um you know um American Fool and Lonesome Jubilee also sound great, but they're not RLs, so they're a little bit different. Um, but this is just one of those that uh, I just love the way that his mastering sounds. So I was like, holy crap, I didn't realize he cut the 45 too, and it's minty. Um, and then for my Robert Palmer fandom, grabbed the uh, original 45 of I Didn't Mean to Turn You On, which is originally from the Riptide album. Uh, fantastic cover and i have a later 45 of it from the from the reissue series but couldn't resist picking up the uh, original with the gorgeous sleeve and then the last two 45s i picked up uh the seven inch of u2's desire from rattle and hum and then this interesting one which is uh, sparks and jane weedland called cool places never really heard of it but since i'm a big go go's fan i'm like okay it's it's got jane on it i've got to grab it and also i thought it was cute it's got this really cute um rear cover where it, she's got a she's getting pied in the face in slow motion so i saw that and it was like 50 cents i'm like okay <laughs> you had me at that what i couldn't believe though is that desire was in there and uh this is the original pressing so it's got the really cool and this of course is very uncommon for seven inches but you know it has the beautiful cover shot of larry uh there is of course a 12 inch of this as well but this is actually a gatefold so you have more of the stunning imagery from the, uh, you know, the promotional and photography campaign for this record, which, you know, I know this is sort of a mixed bag. The the album Rattle and Hum is a mixed bag for a lot of U2 fans. Uh, it is for me as well. But, uh, I mean, the art design for this, uh, you know, I mean, it's unparalleled. Um, so, yeah, of course, Rattle and Hum is a compilation album. It's a mixture of new tracks and then live cuts from the Joshua Tree tour. So, I mean, it is an album, but it's one of those where it's more like a uh, an artistic project and not a full, you know, obviously not a full studio record. So, again, it's, it's very hit and miss for most fans. Uh, but, again, super cool to find this with the gatefold 7-inch cover and everything. Uh, you know, usually if you find U2 records in, you know, the 45 bins, they're just going to be, uh, you know, dinged up in the dollar bin, especially not with their sleeves. So that was just super cool to find this. And again, beautiful imagery and 
this particular track just leaps out of the seven inch. So um, all the U245s I've found so far are really great sounding, uh, particularly for this era. And I really feel for Joshua Tree, the original U.S. pressing of the album, the Master Disc DMM cut, is the definitive way to hear the album. So uh, sometimes these, some of these 45s really improve on that. I haven't gotten Rattle and Hum yet. I've heard a lot of fans say the U.S. pressing is the way to go. It just keeps eluding me because it's a you know double LP set that's they seem to have not pressed as many of because it was in the CD era, like Joshua Tree. So, um, but I'm trying to find that one day because it's supposed to sound really good. But uh, man, this thing just leaps out of the grooves. So, moving on to the standard albums in 12 inches, I picked up at the show. This was one of the dollar bin finds, and you may say, "Well, wait, why do you have another Crimes of Passion copy?" Well, uh, that's a good question. So sometimes when I see cheap records, I'm like, "Oh, I might know somebody who who know who needs this, or somebody who would like this." Uh, you know, if I already have a copy of something, or you know, is it a good upgrade copy or something. So I saw this and, uh, you know, just glancing through stuff. I'm like, well, this is in nice shape and, uh, you know, it's otherwise the same, but I happened to say, well, let me slip it out and see what it looks like. And then I happened upon this really weird thing because on the standard version, I really loved what they did with the label. And then I saw this and I was like, wait, what is this? So this is the same super cool label with Pat draped across the bar there. But as you can see, it's a white label instead of the standard blue and white chrysalis label, which you know has the same image. So I looked it up uh, after I bought it, because of course I saw this and bought it, and I'm like, okay, well, it's not marked as a white label promo, but it's got a white label, so that's what my brain jumps to. So apparently this is a very rare variant. Um, the catalog number is slightly different. The matrix info is a little different. Uh, seemingly it's no different from the standard album in terms of the mastering, but uh, it's apparently a very rare variant to come across, and it looks super cool. And of course, the first thing, you know, most nerds like myself will think, oh my god, it's a white label promo, I must buy this. Um, fortunately, it's, unfortunately, it's not, of course, but it's still super cool, and I'm definitely hanging on to this. It's also in really nice shape. I think it's actually in slightly better shape than my standard copy, so uh, I was definitely happy to pick this up for a buck. So I was like, I don't know what this is yet. I can't look this up right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and buy it and hope for the best. <laughs> Next up is Jackson Brown's Run It On Empty. Uh, this is an album I used to own a copy of years ago, and you know, it was before I realized what you know club copies were doing to my record collection. And that sounded okay, but it was a club copy, so I stupidly traded it in and then you know later on regretted it because the title track is one of those songs that just pops in your head and it gets stuck there. And then I didn't have a copy of this album anymore, and, and I'd be like... This song is still stuck in my head. Um, so I always meant to find an original somewhere, but for some reason, I guess people started wanting this again. So usually it turns up for, you know, more than the common album price it should be. This is like a $3 record, but usually you see it turn up for $10 or more nowadays, which is kind of silly. Um, of course, it does have a poster and things. So if it is complete, you know, I can understand maybe, you know, five or five or ten bucks but it is a very common album so i was holding out and found this copy which is minty it's in the shrink wrap has the original hype sticker perfect shape and was you know literally like three bucks so i was like yes i can finally get this uh it's on asylum records just like most of the eagles albums and it sounds really good so this is another solid original pressing you can pick up uh just gotta try and make sure you get a complete one in good shape and you don't get charged an arm and a leg i said poster but i was meaning booklet so here is the original booklet which is in perfect shape and it's a full color uh, booklet of you know shots from on the road and of course you know much nicer than having the uh, tiny version in a cd booklet the paper stock is kind of textured and of course the background matches the actual album jacket which is always a nice touch and it was just really nice to find an original copy that was in super clean shape so i was like finally yes there's the rear shot here's the inner with Lyric sheet printed on there and lovely photos. Uh, just really nice release. Uh, it's really cool when you find one of these complete in good shape. And again, sounds it just sounds plain great. Uh, this was mastered by Bernie Grunman. He uh, was one of the great engineers, so no worries there. Here's the Asylum label. Uh, the Debwax credits this as a specialty pressing. And again, super solid. Uh, sounds fantastic. So yeah, this is one of those, just get an original pressing because nothing else is going to suffice. 
Next we have, for me, what was the find of the entire show. I could not believe I found this. Um, original CCR pressings are getting extraordinarily hard to find. Original fantasy pressings, I should say. Um, and while there are really great audiophile reissues, a uh, number done by Steve Hoppin and Kevin Gray, um, those are mostly in and out of print. They have been reprinted on certain albums. Um, you know, So there are you know great you know, official versions out there that you can get that are, you know, technically better than the original issues. But with CCR in particular, there's just something about when you get that original pressing, uh, you know, it just has that, that mojo, that spark, that uh, it just... It's, it's different because I've heard some of the reissues that sound amazing uh, and there's so much clarity and stuff and they're from master tapes and so on and so forth. I need to get, I need to start tracking those down, but they're, you know, climbing up there in price. But I really just wanted to start getting original copies. But again, it's a very expensive proposition. And in particular, when you find them, they're almost always trashed. So finding a clean original from the, you know, preferred pressing plants is extraordinarily difficult so this is actually the first one i've ever been able to do and this was just there for 10 bucks and i couldn't believe it so this is an original pressing on the fantasy label of green river which is for me probably i think the best ccr album it's my favorite uh it has my two favorite deep tracks from their entire uh, discography uh in addition to the di- to the title track which is probably my favorite ccr song period um so could not believe this was there. And then ironically, at the next table, uh, somebody had the first album, which is the hardest one to get, because obviously the first album, you know, lowest original print. War- <sighs> ironically, the very next table had the first album, which is the hardest to find, because obviously new band, first album, smallest print run. Fantasy was not a big major label at the time. They were kind of established by CCR in most people's minds. Um but they had an original white label promo of the first album. And I was just like, holy crap, this is beautiful. And I held it in my hands and I'm like, oh my gosh, I really want this. And I looked at the price tag and I'm like, yeah, I can see this being a hundred dollars. Like that, that makes sense. I'm sure it's probably worth more than that, but man, that's, oof. I, oh gosh, I should, I should set this down and walk away before I, before I do something rash. (laughs) That that was very tempting. But, uh, so I was very happy to get this for only $10. so anyway, there are, you know, audiophile versions out there that, you know, are technically better, but there's just something about these original issues, and uh, this one in particular I was so happy to find because it is a minty original copy, and it's actually from the preferred pressing plants, because if you read about CCR on forums and you talk to other uh, audiophiles and vinyl nerds, uh, and you find out about certain bands, you know, their their vinyl releases are very much affected about um, by where they were pressed originally. So with CCR... And these fantasy releases, there are different plants, and they're, they're stamped with a letter somewhere in the dead wax that will indicate which plant. And uh, for these in particular, it's it's kind of held that the H for Hollywood stampered ones are, are generally better. Uh, and this literally carries that, so I couldn't believe it because I, I keep try to keep certain things like that in the back of my head if I'm looking at you know a, a, a CCR copy when it pops up in the wild, which is very rare Um, because I've only found a handful in the past five years. It's just, they don't pop up. And when they do, they're trashed. And they have like a $25 sticker on it. I'm like, but it's trashed, man. Um, So anyway, the original jacket is here, has the sort of flip back design on the sides, and it's, it's, it's near mint. I mean, there's a little wear at the corners, and that's it. So I can't believe this has survived all this time. Uh, and, and in such good shape and they only wanted 10 bucks for it so i was like yes so so here's the original nice blue classic fantasy stereo label full radio stereo and uh you know you have the uh, numbered dead wax here but here on the opposite corner you won't be able to see there's a little tiny stamped h and that's what you want to look for on ccr records on original fantasy pressings uh to figure out where it was uh where it was made this copy, it's got some visible scratches and things, but otherwise it is supremely better than any other copy I've ever seen of this album and uh, any other CCR pressings I've found in the wild for sure, um, outside of that white label promo self-title that I wanted so bad but couldn't afford. Um, but anyway, so even though it, it looks a little more like a VG+, uh, it, it plays so much better than that, and the vinyl itself 
has a nice weight to it. It's definitely heavier than your standard 140 gram. Uh, feels like maybe 150 or something like that. I, I don't have a scale, but I should really get one. <laughs> so anyway, this finally gets me one vintage, clean, original CCR pressing. So I'm one down and got to get all the rest. But um, again, stunning find. This was the find of the show for me. Made the whole drive worth it because I had to drive a bit further than where they usually have it because they were trying to find a different locale and trying to keep it outdoors. So it was a little chilly that morning <laughs> doing it on a Sunday morning outside in, in the middle of nowhere. But, um, you know, it was it was fun. It was a different experience and this made the whole drive worth it. So could not believe this was there. Um, and again, it's really surprising that it's so extraordinarily difficult to get clean original CCR fantasy pressings. But um, there are reissues from the 70s and 80s on the brown and blue fantasy labels. Um, I've heard they can sound pretty good, but, you know, it's also a reissue of a reissue of a reissue. And, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be several steps away from the original. And again, there's just something about these. I, I've heard others before. I've heard other people's copies of them. And it's just it just stuck with me. So I threw this thing on and sure enough, it was like finally in my own system I got to hear one of these and uh, again really nice sturdy vinyl too so um, so happy to finally have one of these next up is a cheap original pressing of the Eagles Desperado album it's got the original texture cover and if you know anything about the Eagles or if you've been looking for their records in stores um, it is really difficult to get clean original pressings of any of their albums for cheap uh, it's just, and they're another one of the famous bands that's just shooting up in, in prices in most local record stores. Um, you used to be able to get their albums for, you know, five or 10 bucks each. Now they're between 10 and 20. Uh, you know, so it's, a, they're just one of those bands that nothing really sounds like the original pressings. There are some nice audiophile reissues. There's some DCC reissues that are, of course, long out of print and very expensive. Um, but if you can get a clean original pressing, they were extraordinarily well recorded and well made back in the day, and I don't think anything really betters them. But there, you know, there are a bunch of different reissue options out there if you want those. But um, I'm not the biggest fan of the Eagles, but there's some some songs and certain albums that I really really like. Um, so I I was just you know impressed so much by the other albums I've gotten and how well they were recorded uh, that I've tried to get the other ones. And again, it's getting harder. So I found this nice copy. It's got the original texture cover. That's another giveaway on uh, Desperado and uh, on the border. You know, the original copies have the really cool, very textured cover that's indicative of a first pressing. Now, like their other albums, this is on the Asylum label. Uh, this one was mastered at the Mastering Lab, so it doesn't say who, but I would guess that means it was cut by Doug Sachs, one of the great legendary engineers, and uh, this thing sounds great. So <laughs> even though I'm not the biggest Eagles fan, I mean, these pressings are so good, they really start to win you over. So here's the Asylum label, has the custom messages of Craig Says Hi and uh, Sandy plus Kathy on side two. Now, the only thing that I'm not quite sure about, I'm going to have to look this up. Uh, it doesn't have a TML stamper in there anywhere on either side, but it does have a date. Uh, it looks like a date of like 5776. So I don't know if maybe this actual cutting is perhaps a reissue or a recut. So I'm going to, I'm going to double check and look that up. But uh, the jacket seems like an original because it has the textured uh, cover. And the inner is just a plain paper inner, so... Not sure about that, not 100%, um, but I have I have played this, and it does sound really good. So, um, again, not sure 100% if the actual uh, LP is the original first pressing or if it's a recut, because usually when you have a TML mastered record, it has some version of the TML stamper or, you know, the mastering lab written out. I'm just happy to finally have one another one of the uh, you know Eagles original albums because again they've gotten really hard to get in cheap shape and you know this this was under five bucks and the LP is perfect and the cover is is in really nice shape and it's got the original textured cover so I was like okay I can do this you know <laughs> you know five bucks and under that's just much more my speed for getting nice clean original pressings as opposed to the you know the sometimes twenty dollar price tags uh, you know records that are relatively common are hitting now in most stores. Next up is a really nice condition minty copy of Billy Joel's Nylon Curtain, which is one of the later albums. I've really focused on getting the, the main run of 70s and 80s albums, and um, 
because I was I, growing up, I was never really a Billy Joel fan, but there were several songs I really liked, and you know, obviously some of the singles. I didn't really like the sort of popular stuff from the mid to late '80s, but uh, you know, as I grew up and I got more and more into music, I got into the '70s albums, uh, particularly you know, Stranger, Fifty Second Street, and then Glass Houses is really kind of where I check out. That was the last one I really latched onto, and uh, I'd always meant to get the later albums just to get a nice original pressing and, and see what it was like. And again, with prices going up and the vinyl revival, it's getting really hard to get nice original copies of even, you know, relatively common albums like this. So finally found a nice copy, has the original hype sticker, and again, it was under five bucks. So I was like, yes, I'm, I'm going for it. And, you know, for pretty much every Billy Joel record, they all sound great. Um, there's not really a bad sounding one in the bunch so far that I've found. Um, I'm sure there are outliers, but, uh, you know, in particular, uh, you know, 52nd street and glass houses sound great. Almost all of his records were mastered by Ted Jensen. And, uh, if you do ever manage to find the really rare Ludwig cut version of the stranger, which I finally found, man, that thing is sublime. That thing sounds fantastic. Um, and the standard Ted Jensen one already sounds great, but uh, you got to search through like hundreds of copies of that album until you finally find a RL version. Here's the original lyric sheet. And of course, as I said before, like pretty much all of Billy Joel's albums mastered by Ted Jensen at Sterling Sound sounds fantastic and I don't think is ever bettered. Uh, for his albums, again, some of them even released on Super Audio CD, but, uh, you know, these original pressings, you know, if you find good clean copies and you're patient enough, you can pay, you know, five or ten bucks a pop for each of them and you really don't need to upgrade them outside of that unless you want some reissue with bonus tracks and demos and stuff. Um, all of these sound great across the board. And then here it is on the Columbia label, and it just has the little Sterling stamp on both sides. So it's not signed Ted Jensen, but he did master this, and uh, yeah, so it's got Sterling stampers, and sounds great. So this is another one I finally got a nice original of and probably never need to upgrade again. Next up, this was a total surprise. Had it not been for the CCR record, this would have been the find of the show for me. So this is uh, the 12-inch UK 45 RPM single of Public Image Limited's most famous and uh, biggest hit song, This Is Not A Love Song. Of course, Pill being the uh, John Lydon-fronted band, famous for being one of the most experimental, all-over-the-place bands you can possibly imagine, and being his big effort post sex pistols and constantly being like a chameleon uh a chameleon like ever changing uh band both in terms of style and and genre and not to mention lineup um so anyway this being a sort of anti-pop single ironically became their biggest hit single and i'd always wanted to get the original british 12 inch because as i've said before in other videos i love uk 12 inches from the set from the 80s really because they were almost always cut at 45 rpm and you get it on a 12 inch you get bigger grooves usually you get a 12 inch version and b-sides and stuff also at 45 speed and it's a lot better than you than a us 12 inch because those are almost always 33 and a third and they're all like promo discs or there's stuff for djs and it's just remixes so anyway, you have the lovely iconic pill logo and uh, nothing else on the jacket. So it's nice, very, very direct, very bold, and you know easily a nice display piece. And the jacket's in pretty good shape still. And of course, being British, it's got the you know nice floppy thinner cardstock. It's on the Virgin label, and so you get uh, the original version of the song at 45 speed. Uh, you get other tracks, Blue Water, and then you get a uh, remix version of This Is Not A Love Song, and then the track Public Image. even had the original Made In Great Britain style sleeve that you would get. You get these with a lot of original British pressings uh, from the 70s and 80s if, you know, they still had the inner, so it has the sort of... Um, has the uh, cut corners and everything, but uh, the actual material, I guess it is... It's very much rice paper like. I don't know if it is rice paper, but it's uh, it usually keeps records a lot better off than your standard uh, paper sleeves, which are just, you know, scuff a lot. Of course, side one, you just have the pill logo, which looks super badass on a 12 inch. Uh, the uh, cutting location, it's got the, uh, the pound of tape. Uh, indicators, which you'll see on a lot of 80s British releases. And when you see that, uh, it's going to be nice and punchy sounding. 
Uh, I fired this up. This thing sounds fantastic. It sounds better than I ever imagined. Uh, normally, this will go for like, you know, at least 10 or 20 bucks on Discogs, if not a little bit more. Uh, pill releases on vinyl, not super common, particularly the albums and getting original pressings can be a very, very uh, costly proposition, uh, particularly for Metal Box being the iconic second album that was literally originally released in a metal can on three LPs. That That sucker will set you back a couple hundred bucks easily. Um, it's well worth it because it, uh, the uh, first track, Albatross, is probably the most bass-heavy track I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and uh, every time it's been reissued, it, it just does not sound the same. The bass does not hit as low. That's why original pressings will, will cost ridiculous amounts. But it is worth it, so save up. Um, so anyway, I was super happy to find this. Uh, again, it's one of those songs that gets stuck in your head all the time. And anytime I can get an original uh, British 45 RPM 12-inch, I get super happy because for songs like this, it, it does not get any better. This is literally the best release of this song, period. Next up is the Pretenders 12-inch UK 45 RPM single of 2,000 Miles. I've wanted to pick this up for a while because this was actually one of the one of a handful of releases uh, of their British uh, releases that was mastered by the incredible uh, Tim Young, who usually did a lot of stuff at CBS. He mastered a number of the early Clash albums, and uh, his Tim Tom signature on a record release means it's going to sound freaking phenomenal. He's mastered some of my favorite sounding records of all time, including uh, Pete Townsend's Empty Glass, and he did the original white label London Calling, the Clash's masterpiece. Um, and that that's one of the 10 best records I've ever heard. That's one of those, you know, holy grail records. Um, so he is a mastering genius. Um, so he did, uh, apparently he did a version of the Pretenders debut album in the UK and then a version of Le their Learning to Crawl album. And then uh, I found out about it because uh, I picked up the British 12-inch uh, Back on the Chain Gang, their classic single from Learning to Crawl, and uh, saw his signature in there, and I'm like, holy crap, this sounds fantastic. Then I just literally looked up Pretenders, you know, Tim Young, and then started seeing all this mention of the, the main two albums that are their most famous, and I'm like, wait, he cut those? So I've been looking for them ever since, and I knew he cut this particular 12-inch, so I was very happy to find a copy. It's got the traditional uh, 80s, very thin, floppy UK style sleeve. Uh, it's got the flip back, but uh, the jacket's beautiful. Nice printing, very glossy paper as well. And then the inner is actually blue, which is kind of cute. So here's the label. Again, UK 12 inch at 45 speed. And in the dead box, you have the Tim Tom at CBS. So that's that's what he would sign. Or, you know, it'll, it'll say Tim Tom somewhere on even some US pressings carry his mastering. But uh, yeah, I think for these Pretenders releases, I think they, they're actually better than the US ones. I just unfortunately haven't found uh, the Tim Tom UK ones. And the U.S. pressings are already great, so you know it, it, I'm I'm interested to see what uh, his cut could improve. Uh, you know, particularly on the first album, which is a very long album, has very long sides, and I was always amazed that the U.S. Sire original sounds freaking great. So I'm um, I'm thinking maybe his could be actually better. This was another dollar bin pickup. This is the Boss Gags album, Slow Dancer. I believe this is a reissue. It's credited as such on the rear because uh, there's a different cover, and apparently this is the reissue with uh, different artwork and such. So I'm thinking, I believe this was reissued around 76, 77, and the original album came out in 74. And as I get older, the more and more I go along, I, I keep listening to his other albums. Of course, I've had Silk Degrees for years, super common record, most everybody has it, and sounds phenomenal, and, you know, if you've not heard Low Down, then what are you doing with your life? <laughs> it's one of the classic, greatest songs of all time, um, but the older I get, the more I, 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 I really kind of get into his style, um, and his records almost always sound great, and you can get them for super cheap, so again, this was a dollar pickup, nice looking cover, and again, it's, it's apparently reissued, but uh, I've spun this up, and it sounds really nice. So here it is on the standard red label Columbia. And, uh, you know, it's got 1A matrices and it has mastering lab stampers. So again, man, this thing sounds great. Um, again, you get his 70s era stuff. I mean, it sounds great. And particularly, you know, getting an original Silk Degrees with the TML stampers, you know, they're a dime a dozen. You can get it for a buck or two, but you got to make sure you wait till you get a clean one. And, you know, 
I, I can use that as a demo piece for people who don't believe in vinyl. I mean, you know, that's that's a dollar record you can get throw on. The whole album is great, and it sounds great to this day. Um, so any any of his, uh, you know, even his 80s albums, I have one or two of it, and they still sound good. So uh, this, this was a no-brainer at a dollar. <laughs> Next up is a... I could not believe this was <laughs> this was available locally, and especially at this price. So this is Simple Minds' 1981 album, Sons and Fascination. And uh, this is actually the original 1981 British pressing on the Virgin label. Um, getting Simple Minds records, um, they're actually quite, but they're much more of a prolific band than I ever realized. And I think most people also, you know, you generally think of their uh, more well-known 80s output, uh, you know, so when you go back and look through their discography and realize, no, they actually put out a lot of albums, particularly in their in their early days. Um, you usually don't find them ever, and particularly not British original pressings. Uh, this album in particular, this edition, uh, there's not really even very many on Discogs. This is like a $20 or $30 record easily. Um, so originally this was released in tandem with another record, and they released them uh, in record stores back in 81. Apparently Virgin released them uh, literally bundled together, and then uh, shortly thereafterwards they just sold them separately. So this is actually the separate version. The catalog numbers are slightly different, but apparently the mastering, the pressing, everything else is identical and the two records were literally just like you know shrink wrapped together when they were originally sold and then they just broke them up and you know gave them a different catalog number so you will pay a bit more when you get the you know the official original double set package but for what i've been able to figure out the actual individual versions are exactly the same um but in any case these do not pop up ever and i've been trying to get into more of their discography because again like most people I think I know their most famous songs and, and I have one or two their you know their biggest 80s records but uh, you know even those aren't super super common so I was just stunned to find this and especially under 10 bucks in minty shape so I was like yes please so show you the rear here uh, again nice stylized jacket which goes over on to the actual LP label uh, there's no custom enter it's just a plain paper enter I think there may have been something custom for the original double album set uh, but I'm, I'm not for sure because I've never actually seen one outside of looking it up on Discogs so here's the original label again nice and customized like to uh, match the jacket uh, it has the Bilbo name and the dead wax Bilbo being uh, Pretty well-known uh, signature of, of a certain British engineer whose name escapes me at the moment. I'm sorry. Um, he did a number of the uh, second and third printings of various Who records and a lot of other things uh, you'll find with Bilbo and the Dead Wax on British pressings of the 70s and 80s. Um, I've spun this. It sounds great, for, the, for particularly for this era. This is super minty, and it does have a custom write-out. So uh, side A has uh, Courage of Dreams, and then the side B is, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, it's spelled Brith Brithanes, uh, B-R-I-T-H-A-N-Z. So I guess it's a it's a wordplay pun on Britons or something. I I guess I'm just I'm guessing. Sometimes uh, these uh, custom dead wax writeouts are are just you know they're very vague. So if you're not in on the joke, you're just you know left scratching your head. But you know I swore I was gonna read out all of these if I ever found them on uh, LPs I was going over in videos. So that's some of them are head scratchers. So <laughs> I just I report them directly to you. So anyway, again stunned to find this locally so again this is like a this is like an easily a $30 record that I got for less than $10 so again it always pays to you know if there's one more bin you know just just go ahead and take the take the minute or two just dig through it you never know what's going to turn up of course gotta have some more U2 this is one I've wanted to get for a long time just never found a clean one at a good price this is the British 12 inch single of Unforgettable Fire obviously from the Unforgettable Fire Sessions. Uh, there is an American version with different cover artwork, and of course this was also issued as a special 7-inch set, where if I'm remembering correctly, it's a double 7-inch set, and I think they may be gatefold sleeves as well, um, but because this is a 45-speed 12-inch, I wanted to get this version, because of course easier to find a clean one, and you don't have to deal with the hassle of dealing with, you know, 
two 45s and four sides and cleaning them and all that stuff. So being a British release, it's got a flimsy style jacket. It is nice and glossy, though, with beautiful band shots. You know, I think in a lot of ways, U2 is almost incapable of not having, you know, stunning looking jackets and amazing art and photography. And of course, you know, if Anton Corbin takes your photos, then, you know, you're going to look like an amazing rock star. Um, but anyway, nice jacket. The back is pretty simple. Of course, you know, obviously on the island label as, you know, pretty much most U2 stuff will be. The reason why I wanted to get this so much is uh, so you have not just Un Unforgettable Fire from album of the same name and then the uh, live sort of homecoming. But uh, you've got Bass Trap as well, which is another B-side. But the, the real reason why you need this release is for Love Comes Tumbling, which is one of their one of the band's best songs period and of course they threw it away as a b-side they've done that a couple times uh but th this is just one of those every time i think of it it gets stuck in my head and i was like i still don't have that 12 inch i've got to find it and one was at the record show and it was under 10 bucks and i'm like yes finally i'm getting this uh, it's not perfect but i need this so here it is uh it's not perfect but uh has the uh, standard black label very stylized U2 there, um, similar to other releases they did around this time period. Uh, sounds great, and you get it on a 12-inch at 45 speed. Um, I was just so happy to finally get a copy of this at a good price. Sometimes they can go a bit high just because it's U2 and it's a British import. Um, but again, you can get it on the 7-inch set. You can get these songs on other releases, and apparently there's an alternate vocal version of Love Comes Tumbling on the Australian 12-inch, which now, because I'm a nerd and I'm obsessed with this song, I have to find that too somewhere. So anyway, I just, I, I really, it's one of those songs I play on a, on a loop for, you know, <laughs> several times over it just gets stuck in my head um so i was so happy to finally get it on the uh, british 12 inch and again these british 12 inches being at 45 speed that's just you know magic to my ears and then last but not least this was another dollar bin find uh this is yes's tormato album um i've never been a giant prog fan but the more i dig into yes the more i just get really really impressed by all their you know varying albums across their career and uh you know just anytime i see one i, I especially for cheap like this especially for a dollar i know it's definitely <laughs> it's definitely gonna be worth my time the cover's a little dinged up has a little ring wear but otherwise is still solid has an original saw cut from back in the day so this probably sat in the bins a little while this is the original 1978 Atlantic pressing. And uh, again, the vinyl itself is literally perfect. So I was like, yes, I will pay a dollar for this. That's the original custom inner with your lyric sheet on both sides. Again, couldn't believe this was in the dollar bin there at the record show. So I was like, yes, I will take this. I haven't got to clean this up yet. It's a little dusty, but, you know, that's that's the only problem. It uh, has the custom labels, and uh, this was mastered at Strawberry Studios, and uh, their information is here in the dead wax. So this is a strawberry cut. Uh, and, uh, again, just a nice original copy. and Couldn't believe this was there in the dollar bins. So anyway, that does it for this update to my record collection. Uh, hopefully you have found out about some interesting albums you want to pick up for your own. I uh, got reminded of some stuff that you either have on the shelf or you've had on your Discogs want list for way, way too long. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a fun show to go to. It's the first one in over a year, really, because uh, the, the last one, I can't even remember when it was. I think it was maybe August, September of, uh, you know, 2019. So uh, it was really cool to be able to actually, you know, go to a record show again. And, you know, everybody had a mask on. And uh, it was really difficult to look through bins with your glasses fogging up outside. <laughs> again, it was a little bit chilly and it was a bit of a drive. But uh, I was happy to be able to go and support some uh, local record vendors and the guy who puts the show together every time. So um, it, it was it was a fun experience and uh, got some other stuff that uh, and some new stuff that I've been meaning to get for a while and some really, really great finds. So hopefully you guys enjoyed hanging out and listening to me prattle on way too long about record pressing. So as always, thank you so much for watching.